So you love a numpad and going smaller feels like a compromise. You might be a high sensitivity gamer or don't mind the aggressive slant for FPS goodness. And when you're thirsty, just look for the space bar. <laughs> That's terrible. That's terrible. So in front of me or in front of you are all the latest full-size keyboards launched recently that you can actually buy too. Let's see what is good and what is for the trash bin. Okay. Okay, delete. But hopefully the days of gaming companies upcharging for trash are at the end, simply because there's a ton of interest in the keyboard space right now and we get more exposure on what is good and basically redefining what that good reference point means. So let's start with my favorite releases and everything will be linked down below, of course. The Asus Strix Flare 2 Animate. Now this keyboard is exactly what I would use in the gaming space if full-size keyboards were for me. Despite all the cool bling that is well above the competition, it is the typing experience that is well taken care of. So the switches are super smooth and one of the most stable in this roundup. The stabs for the larger keys are well above the competition in terms of tuning uh, and the overall keyboard sounds pleasant and is just super nice to type on. The rest of the keyboard is super premium. Obviously the Animatrix is pretty cool, but also limited in what it can display. So I give it kind of a gimmicky status. The really chunky cable is non-removable, which is a shame. The switches are hot swappable if you're into that, but only with a three pin switch. The double shot PPT keycaps feel great with crisp legends. The media controls are very well integrated and the keyboard just looks gorgeous with and without the wrist rest. And don't forget the USB 2 pass-through port for other peripherals. So this thing is expensive, but it is kind have this like true flagship status in this class of gaming keyboards and it's probably the one that I would gravitate for this type of money. Then we have this, the new Glorious, the GMMK2. It's one of the so few full-size keyboards that has a removable cable and that's a huge thing right now because customizing cables are the hot thing. Plus the size of the keyboard is just lovely because it's the 1800 format and the numpad and the arrow keys are like slightly more condensed together. So the whole thing is just slightly bigger than TKL. It's awesome for compact spaces, especially like I'm working from right now while still letting you numpad away. The base is super heavy, which gives you good stability. The switches and the stabs are pre-looped by Glorious, which makes this one of the nicest keyboards to use on a daily basis. Of course, the double shot PPT keycaps have this good amount of texture, but the legends are fairly soft, not as crispy to indicate less premium keycap. I do love the accent escape key toe, lovely color. For those future swaps, the MK2 is hot swappable with three and five pin switches in case you find the Fox switches too heavy. So they do feel really smooth, but perhaps a bit closer to blacks than reds, especially when you bottom out because of the added resistance. But this would be like 100% my top pick for a FUSAS keyboard for my space. Well done, Glorious. And the car just drove away. Thank you very much. Bye bye. This next keyboard is not a keyboard at all, but a message from today's video sponsor. Oh, what a great day. Designed and miniaturized in Sweden, you can now nano and mini with the Meshify 2 and Define 7 series. Wow. Everyone's been asking Fractal to complete the series for that iconic experience, just in a smaller package. Always capable in the right hands. Some might say these are cute. I say they're very classy. See you later. All right, so welcome back. One of the most surprising keyboards in here is the Keychron C2, a $50 keyboard with its priorities in line. So first of all, we have this really cool retro design without any illumination, and it's kind of refreshing to be honest, especially because of the double shot ABS keycaps that have a really pleasant, grippy texture, and the font is beautiful. I love the two-tone colorway, plus, I mean, I do have a soft spot for accident keycaps, <laughs> and this muted red is absolutely perfect. It also has a removable USB-C cable, which you barely see on the keyboard in this price range, which is USB-C on both ends with USB-A adapter included, perfect for whatever system you'll use this on. So it's a huge win for the C2 because the keyboard is both Windows and Mac compatible with the switch at the back and extra keycaps, of course, are included to satisfy either OS user. That is absolutely cool. And they also have a hot swap board with three and five pin switch compatibility. Again, really impressive for this price point, allowing me to change the feel of this keyboard later on. And you can also save 10 bucks for a non hot swap keyboard. And the overall typing experience is surprisingly decent 
for $50. It is not the quietest and it doesn't have much talk either, but for sure it feels better than some of the gaming keyboards twice its price. My only complaint with this keyboard is the flex of the plastic frame. You know, it's visibly bent, which honestly doesn't really matter for me because the typing experience is very nice and you can actually mod the keyboard with some foam inside and the tape mod for the stabilizers, making this thing feel much more expensive than it is. Next up is the Ducky 1-3 RGB and this is kind of a staple at this point. They just released a white model that looks awesome because of the light spill and the illumination through the keycaps with their usual spacebar design and of course, accent and keycaps. And man, they know how to deliver on all fronts. So the double shot PPT keycaps have this wonderful texture and crispy legends with of course, a standard bottom row so you can mix and match. You can still flex the keyboard frame, which is a little bit unfortunate, but there's a lot of weight to it. So it's very stable on your surface. The switch options are always plenty with a hot swap design for three and five pin switches. The stabilizers feel really nice, although hammering away does introduce some bottoming out noise. So it's not thocky, but it does not rattle and there's no pinging happening through the board, which is a huge win because of the added foam dampening inside the frame. Something to know is that there are no secondary legends on the keycaps, however, so you'll have to refer to the manual if you want to use the mouse commands, record any macros, activate any of the media controls, except for the dedicated volume control, change any profiles, or even play around with all the lighting modes. And one thing that I find really awesome is the function plus spacebar option to select your desired color instead of dialing in with the RGB commands. So you can download the manual, check it out, but the Ducky 1-3 RGB. Very well done. Now for wireless and low profile lovers, the new Razer Deadstalker V2 Pro is pretty awesome on all fronts, including the typing experience. And I've used this keyboard for almost two months or over two months now as my like daily full-size driver. It remains on my desk because I connect up to three Bluetooth devices, including my phone that I'm using to record this video with right now. So I can pause my teleprompter, for example. It's really convenient. And of course, I can connect this to my PC with the dongle that can stash away inside the keyboard at the bottom here that is clearly labeled. And there's also distinction between the full size and the TKL text on the dongle. So if you have both of them, you know what is what. The volume wheel is super tactile. It has a click to mute functionality with a multi-function button right beside there. I can check on the battery health with these status LEDs that gives you up to 40 hours of continuous usage at 50% brightness, which I would say is decent. The only issue is the wireless connectivity is disabled when you plug it into charge, which is super unfortunate as otherwise the switches have this really pleasant sound profile and bottoming out with a bit of cushion at the bottom because of the silicon dampeners and just a very pleasant sound profile. Take a listen. Also, despite the keycaps being ABS, they are coated with something that prevents the usual shine. So all the crispy legends remain pristine and I've done a full comparison versus the G915 from Logitech. So you can check that out over here to see which low profile wireless is best for you. Overall, I'm very impressed with the Deathstalker V2 Pro. If you can swallow the cost of $250 for something like this, then it is worth it. Otherwise, look elsewhere. I do have a few keyboards that need mentioning in order to highlight the room for improvement, AKA a very polite way to say they might be going in the trash bin if they don't get fixed. Know what I mean? The new Corsair K70 RGB Pro. Man, they sure know how to deliver a premium keyboard from a visual and a feature point of view, like the iconic aluminum top plate, the lovely elevated media controls. I love their PPT uh, or double shot PPT keycaps that have this great texture while also delivering crisp font. The USB-C cable at the back is removable and there's even a tournament switch that disables macros and red <laughs> gives you 23% extra aimbot. Of course. This keyboard supports 8,000 Hertz polling, which makes no sense. It's a mechanical switch. It's not optical. It's not instantaneous. You're still dealing with some debounce delay, but 
It's a typing experience that is not where it should be for this price class. So the linear switches are scratchy and they're not smooth at all. Plus the stabilizers are completely bare and have so much rattle and pinging throughout the entire board. Really unfortunate because for this level of features, I would expect it to deliver a good typing experience, but it doesn't. This next keyboard, you can tell, is their very first one and goes very much against their slogan, there's nothing extraordinary about the NZXT function. Despite the removable USB-C cable, the comfy wrist rest and the hot swap switches, <laughs> it is basically all downhill from here. I am very sorry NZXT, but where do we begin? First of all, the volume skips scroll steps and it feels like there's something grinding inside. The three shortcuts buttons on the side are kind of useful with the mute, windows lock and brightness steps, but they're not remappable and these default functions could easily be just like some secondary shortcuts on the main keyboard while letting you macro those side keys for something else because they're fairly accessible. Now for the main keyboard, you can see these are standard ABS keycaps and they don't even have secondary legends on the numpad area, not even a delete key, which perhaps is more useful to showcase. And just feels like a lazy design with hot swap keyboards thrown into the hype to like elevate a below average product. And the stabs on this thing are totally bare and sound horrible. Take a listen. For $129, this is money in the bin. This is not how you enter a new product category and let's just hope for something much better next time. My last keyboard is a budget surprise from Logitech that does a few things really well and a few things not so. Now the great aspects are the very clean frame design plus the aluminum top plate to avoid body flex. It's a very sturdy keyboard. The cable is non-removable, but it exits on the right side, which I prefer. And if you want proper bright white illumination without that RGB nonsense, this thing is perfect. Plus going to full stealth mode is possible because of the darker transparent sections on the keycaps. You can see, that's awesome. Which are made with PVT by the way, so they are textured and hide the glossy tips. The stabs are actually okay. They are not looped, but have some more dampening versus something like the NZXT keyboard. My only complaint with this keyboard are the switch options. It is only available with tactile switches that do not have a consistent feel across the board. Some are scratchy, some are smooth, some have spring pinging. At least they are all slightly muted, which is nice and still have like a pleasant experience for typing. I don't really enjoy gaming with tactiles, but you might be different. And so for $79, I would say it is a disappointment in a pretty package, but not totally discountable for this price point. I am back to say the Nano has this really clever fan shroud to direct the airflow directly into the main chamber, while the Mini is all about reviving that whole MicroTX form factor. So join the Nano Mini Club with the Meshify 2 and the Define 7 series. Explore all the case options down below. I'm out for real this time. And to conclude on a positive note, I do have an audible mention for the full size lovers from last year, the Wooding 2 HE that has incredibly smooth Lecker switches that support analog movement, adjustable actuation point throughout the entire range of switch travel. The switches can be made to reset as soon as they are released to improve on input latency. And I really appreciate what Wooding is doing with their software that is web-based, so you don't have to download anything and everything can just be saved locally on the keyboard memory once it's configured through the web utility. So if you're a full size lover, let us know some other awesome options that you've been using. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you in the next video.